family. What was the atmosphere like as, as that attack happened? As this, we don't know exactly what it was, but potentially some kind of bomb or a missile. What was the atmosphere like inside the compound? Inside, we, uh, I can just talk about myself and what I saw. It's, it's like we were standing next to, to, the, to, the, to the building um, that, that was, it was the ex Gaddafi's place, uh, uh, house. Uh, there was some people around this area, and there was some people around or close by the other building where the, the, the missile came. I, I don't know if it's missile or anything, but I know the explosion was there. Um, we, you know, in that time, you feel it's, it's you expecting something to happen. You hear noises, you hear explosions all around, but you don't know where the attack is coming from. We were just looking at the sky and waiting for something, waiting for, for an airplane or a missile or a bomb or anything. And all of a sudden you hear this like whistle sound and big explosion, big blast. It, it's, it's a shock. It's, it's not a movie. It was a real. Like you are in the real, in, inside a movie or something. You don't believe it's real or, or something like this. But you want, it's like the minute of the blast, it was like we were shot. Like you don't believe this, this is happening. And, but the, before that and after, people were like, uh, praying to God, God must, God protect them, but, uh, protect us, God protect this country, uh, uh, destroy this, uh, uh, these uh, barbarians. They, they, like we were, all of them, they were shouting to God to help, to rescue us from these, this aggressive attack on us and on our country. The, you, you want, you want to imagine how it was. There was old women. They were, they decided to stay there. There were children, came with them families, and. I was looking at the people and I, I expected people to run, really, but they didn't. They didn't. We stood there. I promise, we stood there. We, and the people who were close to the explosion, it was the other building, which is just a few hundred meters away, they were so close too. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but some of them, or many of them, they were covered with dust. We, like, after that few seconds, the shock, we just all moved to that direction because we know there was other people are there. And we just, when we arrived, we were just looking for arms and legs, but luckily there were just people covered with dust. So just we pulled them out, the coughing, stuff like that. But luckily nobody died, but we were so close, really so close. Mohammed, I think people will wonder what you were doing inside Colonel Gaddafi's compound at that time. We know that, of course, it's a heavily fortified compound. Um, there has been an accusation from some people that Colonel Gaddafi is trying to use human shields, that he's inviting people inside his compound and inviting them to be just outside the gates as well, because he believes if they are there, it will deter the West from any kind of attack against military hardware positioned around the compound. No, totally, this is not the truth. We went by ourselves. We decided to go. Many, I asked many people. I did interviews also with the journalists to, 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 to ask the people why you were here. My, I know why I was there, but the people, most of them... Why were you there? Why did you want to go? I didn't like what I saw. I didn't like the decision. It was unfair. The accusations to Gaddafi is lies. We, went, we chose to go there. If they want to kill Gaddafi... So nobody made you go there? Nobody, nobody, nobody. There's thousands of people are pushing and they're insisting to go in there. Some of them, they stayed around the complex. Some of them insisted and I was one of them. I wanted to stay in there. If they want to destroy that place and some many other places, it's not only the, 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 that place. There was another airports in, in many different locations. Mohammed, try to give us an idea of why you would want to be inside of that compound when you know that potentially it is a potential target because of the military hardware there. Why do you want to be inside Colonel Gaddafi's compound? Gaddafi's accusations were false and it's lies. He were protecting us. He was not killing us as a civilians. Gaddafi's uh, or the official forces didn't move at the first few days when these what they call themselves rebels, I call them mobs. When they, call, when they started this move, and they started to go around to the, to, the, to, the, to the military bases and attacking soldiers. They had uh, 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 order not to shoot towards civilians. They used youngsters, yes. They dragged some young youngsters, they put them in the front line. Soldiers didn't shoot to, towards them. That's why they managed to take more weapons from the soldiers. They, they left the bases. Most of them, they left the base. Gaddafi's orders at the first few days not to shoot because... He also thought, like us, some Libyans are angry from Gaddafi, but that was not the truth. And this is what made it worse, because if they knew from the beginning it was the people, it would have been easy. 
Gaddafi talks to people. He's all, he's, he was always with the people. Mohammed, you're a dentist by trade. Um, try to give us an idea of the impact on ordinary people trying to go about their business, not particularly Gaddafi's soldiers um, or the people protecting him or his very strong supporters inside the compound. You're a dentist. Try to give us a sense of what your family, your patients are saying. What's their response to the military intervention here? We've had several nights now of heavy gunfire, anti-aircraft fire. It's a terrifying sound for mothers trying to get their children's t- children to sleep. What are your patients and your family saying about this? They're, they're, they're all scared, really. Everybody. We, we're all scared. We are human. We, we, we are scared. I was scared. I was about to die. My family, fa- friends and families, they phoning me. My mom is calling me and crying. She's scared even in her own house. But we don't have another choice. If, if they're going to finish Gaddafi, they'll finish Libya. They'll finish all the Libyans. People like those who decided to, to, or they claim that they want to free the Libyans, if they took the power one day, people like me, they will be dead. They, I'm, uh, we will never survive. Gaddafi is the only one stood with the people and helped them to grow and become better and live better life. Those people, they don't like us and we know that. People like me or the people, ordinary people, they will be targeted. There will be no law to protect them. There will be no one will stand up for them. If they were abused, if they were treated unfair, we know that. And the last thing made us made us love Gaddafi more and more. Before, to be honest, I never cared who's in in, in power or who's not or whatever happening in politics. It's not my business. I'm just a dentist. I care about my patients. That's all what I care. Or to develop my skills and my experience in dentistry. Politics is it's not my interest. And there's many people like me. But now it's it's matter of life or death. If they wanna take over our country by any means, by these what they call themselves rebels or by the Americans, we are finished, we are vanished, that's it. There's no more meaning for our life after that. Mohammed, when the international community says it's not an objective to invade this country, the aim of the military intervention is to protect civilians from being attacked by their own leader. Do you, do you think that people, ordinary people out there, believe that this is not an attempt by the international community, Britain, America, France and everybody else, to invade this country? Do you think they believe that? All people believe that they have another intention, not to protect us. We know that for sure. They want maybe, maybe oil, they want this because of the location, the geographic location. It's not, it's not, I don't care why they want Libya, but the excuse what they made to protect the civilian, this is totally false and this is totally lies. We know, we are the civilians. Our families all around Lib- Libya. We are in Benghazi, we are in Ejdabia, we are in uh, Brega, we are everywhere. We're the East and the, we- East and the West. We have families and friends. We know what we need. And we know that, that for fact, Gaddafi was there, or, he, or the official orders, actually it was not Gaddafi's forces, it's our forces, it's the official forces, the military. The official military were protecting us from these, uh, from these gangs. They were terrifying everybody, they were terrifying families. Families were stuck in their house, they couldn't go out even to eat. What do, you, what do you expect them to do? And all this propaganda, what they do against Gaddafi is just an excuse to come to invade our country. They don't like us. Okay, Mohammed Salah, thank you so much for joining us this morning and giving us a sense of the voice of the people on the streets. Mohammed, uh, a dentist, but who's volunteered his services to work as a translator for the government minders who are taking journalists around, trying to give us some sense of the impact on the ordinary civilians of this country of this military intervention. Uh, uh, thank you. Lisa in Tripoli, of course, reporting there under the supervision of the Libyan authorities. Let's bring in our foreign affairs editor.